Okay, so here we have a yard ladder that we've set up. And I placed a couple of signals outside of my yard ladder and created a block. So this entire yard ladder is covered by this block and I've outlined it in yellow. So we can only send one train into this block. So any train we send into any one of these tracks on this yard ladder is going to be it. That's all we can send into this one block. So what we need to do is we need to try and separate this block out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a couple of signals. And these are going to be 0T signals, meaning I'm not going to put any links down to cover the junction. I'm just going to put two signals down on the yard ladder. Okay, so here I've placed my two signals represented by the red dots, and of course they're facing opposite directions. And I've used uh, zero link signals, so there's just one link for each one of these signals. I'm not crossing the junctions, and I'm going to represent those by the blue, little blue lines. Okay, so here's our blue lines. So what we've essentially done here is created a block between these two signals. So I'm going to draw a box around this block and represent it in blue. Okay, so here is our blue box. And as you can see, this blue box is inside of the yellow box. So now I have two blocks that I can use in this yard ladder, the blue block and the yellow block. Now any of the sidings are part of the yellow block. So if we started at the bottom and said uh, we have our mainline track and then we have track 1 above it, track 2 above that, track 3, track 4, and track 5. Okay. So basically I can send a train into the blue block and then send a train into track 1, 2, 4, or 5 and it won't be an issue. The AI won't have a problem, the dispatcher won't have a problem. If I send a train into track 1, 2, 4, or 5 first, and then I want to try and send a train into the blue block, it will fail. And the reason why is because I already have a train in the yellow block, and you have to go through the yellow block in order to get to the blue block. So this isn't going to work for our yard ladder, but just kind of showing you how blocks are being set up here. So let's change one thing about our signals. And the only thing we're going to change is we're going to make them now 1T signals. So we're going to add a number one link on the other side of the junction. So I'm going to represent that with some purple lines. Okay, so basically what I've done here is I've changed my signals from 0 T's to 1 T's and I have put a purple hash mark where link 1 has been placed and what this does is this provides separation now not only at link 0 but also at link 1 and I'm going to draw a box around this new separation point using uh, purple so we'll have a purple box here Okay, so here is our representation of our new purple block that's been created. And it was created when we placed link 1 down for each one of these signals. So we, we created a separation point along that purple hash line, which is where link 1 was placed. And now we have our yard ladder separated in two and we have the one track that has its own separate block in it inside so now that block is falling inside of the purple block which was created when we placed the number one links for AI purposes and dispatcher purposes as far as scheduling we can schedule up to three trains now into this yard ladder because we now have three separate blocks that we can use and so we can hold a maximum of three trains. Now because of the way this limited blocking and limited signaling is set up we have to do that in order. We would have to send a train into the blue block first 
then we could send a train into the purple block and then we could send a train into the yellow block or line, track one or track two or the main line um, because uh, our purple block and our blue block are within the yellow block so you have to go through yellow to get the purple or blue so that has to be taken into consideration uh, in this particular situation because of the way we set up our signals the same goes true for trying to exit this yard ladder. If I have a train in the blue block and a train in the purple block and a train in the yellow block, well, the train in the yellow block has to leave first before I can send either the purple or the blue. And, I, and I'd have to send the purple next because you can see the blue has to go through the purple in order to exit out. So this isn't really a, a great signaling plan for a yard ladder. I'm just trying to show you how blocks are set up. So let me go ahead and signal the rest of these tracks and we'll see what that looks like. So here's our completed yard ladder and as you can see we now have six blocks within the uh, yellow block, one for each of the tracks because we have a signal um, at each end of the track. Now, this, at this point you have to determine how you want the system to work and how you want your yard signals to work and whether these yard signals are being placed for the user to view or whether they're being placed for the AI to use. If you're only setting these signals up just so you can get the AI to run into this yard ladder or the dispatcher to be able to schedule into this yard ladder. I would suggest that you only use the zero T signals. So you have your choice, I believe, with short um, one head zero T or just the, the head signal um, of one head zero T. And I would place those on your track and then I would bury them under, you know, select them all and bury them under the ground. That way there's no visible, um, no visual link to the end user that the signals are in place, but the AI and the dispatcher understands that there's blocking in place here um, for this yard ladder. And all, all switches would be handled manually by the uh, player or handled by the AI. Your other option here is to say, okay, I really do want to place visual cues here for the player and if that's the case you're really going to want to use the 1T signals um, the dwarf 2 head 1Ts or some kind of a dwarf um, 1T signal and then you have to determine where you're going to place link 1 now naturally if you place link 1 on the opposite side of the, the junction for the track it's only guarding that one junction. So when you switch that junction, you're going to get a clear signal as long as there's no trains coming in. And that doesn't really give you a clue as to what, what the rest of the signals are or what the rest of the junctions are set to on this yard ladder. If you're coming down from track 6, for example, and you only have the one junction done, well, that tells you I can leave track 6 and head on to the yard ladder. But I don't know if track 5 is set against the train, track 4, or any of the other junctions are set against the train. Now if you move link 1 and say I want to place link 1 for my signal, and let's just use track 6 for example. If I want to take link 1 and place it all the way down at the bottom of my yard ladder, then I'm only going to get a clear signal on track 6 if all the junctions are set correctly for me to get to link 1 which is at the bottom of the ladder. So now I'll only get a clear signal when I'm ready to go down to the bottom of the ladder and, and all the junctions are set properly. The downside to that is that if I leave track 6 and I start heading down my yard ladder and I'll only go down as far as track 2 and then I reverse into track 3, well track the signal at track number six is never going to clear because I've never crossed link one for track six. 
as because it's at the bottom of the yard ladder. So we get into some messaging errors when I use the link at the very bottom of the track. The upside is I only get a clear when um when I've got a clear path down to the bottom. So the visual representation for the end user may be wrong. It's not going to affect AI because they don't pay any attention to the visual aspect of the signal. But for their player, it's going to come into play. So now you have to take into consideration when you're getting ready to signal a yard ladder like this, um, whether you're signaling it just so you can get the AIs to come into the yard ladder, or whether you're signaling it for the end user. Um, the advantages and disadvantages of placing that number one link at the bottom of the track as opposed to across each junction uh, and whether or not you're going to add enough signaling um, because technically you would need signals going down for each leg of the Y um, on the one side and then signals coming up for each of the switches or the junctions um, also, so you've gone from placing six signals along your yard ladder, just one side, to placing 18 signals um, on the yard ladder. Six for the one Y, six for uh, the track coming down the yard, and then six for going up uh, through the yard so that you know that you're clear to go all the way through the yard climbing up. So basically you have to take all those things into consideration when you're getting ready to signal a yard and determining and deciding are you, are you signaling for the end user and if so you have to give the end user good input or if you're signaling for the AI and all the AI cares about is these blocks which can easily be created with zero link signals and then burying them um, underground and the AI and dispatcher will understand. So I hope this helps you to understand blocking a little bit and also uh, how, what you have to consider when you're making a yard ladder. Thanks for watching this tutorial.